The IGL role has always fascinated me, guys. Not because it's just like a leadership role, but because there's so little content on YouTube, specifically on the fundamentals of IGLing, right? Because it is an old role. It didn't originate from Fortnite. It originated from games like CSGO, from games like League of Legends. And there's so many different styles in which you can IGL, right? So it can get complex at times. But let's start simple because there might be a couple people watching this video um, who may not know what an IGL is, right? So an IGL stands for in-game leader. Right? The in-game leader is typically the most experienced player on your team. They look to direct all the plays and lead the decisions on your team. Of course, there's like many different styles to IGLing, so there's not one single style. And the IGL is not often, you know, the only player who makes calls. Oftentimes, the other players can make calls as well, but the IGL is the person that can put the stamp on that call and be like, okay, we're doing that, or here, we're not doing that because of this reason. Like, the IGL is sort of, you know, someone who, like, everyone looks to to make the final call. But what are the most core rules that you should follow if you're an IGL because there are some fundamental rules that you should follow and that's the sort of thing that I want to outline in this video. Also sending this video to your IGL will be beneficial to your trio. Definitely. But let's get started. We'll, we'll get right into the video. Okay, so I've created a mind map that you guys can follow along with. It's the top six things that I personally think are very important if you want to learn how to properly IGL in competitive Fortnite and let's get into it, right? Firstly, it's micromanaging. Oftentimes, micromanaging is more detrimental to your team than it is helpful, okay? Especially with the younger players, you know, aka the entire Fortnite community. <laughs> it's cool to tell sometimes, okay, stay front tarp, keep spraying AR while on height, etc. But micromanaging teammates during a final 1v1, for example, is extremely disrespectful and actually significantly hurts your teammates' confidence because it's showing that you don't respect their skill and their decision-making in the moment. This isn't chess, okay? It's not like they're your chess pieces where you can just move them around. This is a game that moves in real time and oftentimes just try to find the most optimal correct play isn't ideal, right? You need to let them play and you need to let them sort of make the decisions for themselves. You need to have trust in your teammates secondly which ties it completely to the first point if you want to get to the point as a competitive fortnite team where you're doing extremely well you need to explain and constantly have discussions about the game outside of the game right understanding the reasons why a particular play is good is crucial and it's important that everyone on the team knows why it's much easier to remember the whys of things rather than the specific particular house of things. Also, if your teammate knows why a particular play is good, you will feel less of a need to micromanage them at all, right? Grow as a team, be patient, and do things correctly, right? Do the process correctly, learn from the beginning. Thirdly, calling on someone's name directly is way more efficient and direct than calming a general play. It's way more psychologically engaging for the player that you're calling on if you're calling their name. They would feel the need to respond in some way and also follow your call directly. Most intermediate IGLs that I watch tend to say, you know, stay ahead, drop me mats. Instead of stay ahead, say something like drop me mats, name of player. Trust me on this one, right? Like implementing this into your IGLing skills will make a world of difference in how well your teammates respond to you. Edgy, how many mats? La, 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 la. I can drop you Next, we can talk about how being assertive and having a confident tone to your voice can help a ton, especially when instilling confidence in your teammates. We all know how important confidence is in tournaments, yet we take very little steps to improve it within our team environment. This is something the IGL can do by speaking in a manner that seems extremely confident, even if it's fake. It's like you need to build yourself up and just be like, okay, this is the play. You need to convince your teammates that this is the play, even if it's not, right? Even if you know, hey, like as you're rotating, like, oh, I just realized like I could have done a different rotate. That no, doesn't matter. Just leave it, leave it. It's in the past. You need to just go with the play and do it together. Help your teammates trust your calls with your tone. Next up, we need to talk about this. This one's actually a very important one. This is something I've learned at the beginning of chapter two, where I was watching a Bugavod and he would always do something I call pre-planning. He would sit in fort zone and map out all the scenarios that 50-50 zone could pull in and their plan accordingly in whichever scenario they're talking about. This way, his teammates would know exactly what the plan was the second 50-50 zone pulled. This enabled them to rotate immediately as a team and no one would be lost. This is key because planning in a way that gives your teammates time to react as nothing could be followed instantaneously. Like I can't just react to a call if you give me zero seconds to react to it, right? You, it's so much better to call ahead of time. You need to communicate your intentions and rarely what you're currently doing, right? Let's give another quick example of this, right? I'm at 400 mats, be ready to drop me mats soon. 
rather than i'm out of mats come give me mats i can't tunnel like do you see the panic and also the organization in those two columns let me say it again i'm at 400 mats be ready to drop me mats soon this is a great calm because what this tells your teammate is like okay I need to stop being mid tarp back tarp and start going up to the front because my teammate needs me for mats very very soon you see the difference there that's the sort of difference that can apply when you choose your words correctly and do things ahead of time to give your teammates time to react to your plays we gotta yeah. try to take low guys we gotta try to take low and, 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 and. Nice. Not ready. last but not least we have the importance of getting everyone together on your call right even if it's a bad call you need to just not doubt your instincts and just go with the play sometimes because in a game like fortnite you rarely have even 30 seconds to come up with a play you will never find the most optimal play every single time just because this game is played in real time right it's not an rts it's not starcraft it's not you know chess you need to make a play right now and more often than not it's not the best play if you go back in VOD review you'll find out hey there's this play i could have done but it's very important that you get the team together and pull the trigger. Most often than not, most people will die because they do nothing. Inaction is sometimes the biggest death of all. Do not be, you know, not confident because that'll sort of seep into your teammates' confidence and just really make sure that you're doing everything together. I think this is really important. I hope this video gives you some insight on the IGL role in competitive Fortnite as it is an extremely, extremely fascinating role and definitely deserves to be talked about more online. Like people don't give enough tutorials. Like the best way to learn about IGLing before this video, in my personal opinion, is to watch pro IGLs and listen to what they do. That's how I learned, right? I was an IGL back in competitive Fortnite and that's how I particularly learned to sort of understand what to do properly. Like maybe Scented would do this and then Savage would do this and then I would take all those bits and pieces and implement them into my play but now i really wanted to make this video because it's sort of lacking like the only only things you could look for are examples on youtube regardless feel free to ask questions in the comments as i do read them all i will get to yours and answer your question that's all for now and i'll see you guys in the next video